This is the On the Pony Express podcast. Part of the On3 network. Check out all the SMU coverage you need at ontheponyexpress.com. Now, now. here's your host, Billy Embody. Billy Embody. One, two, three. Ready we go. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I'm Billy M. Body. With me is SMU women's basketball co- coach, Toya Wilson. Thanks for the time. Coach, we're sitting here in the new digs. I <laughs> love it. I walked in, a lot brighter, graphics yeah. all over the place. What went into all that and getting the facelift around here? Well, you know, when I first got here, I thought, um, you know, these offices hadn't been changed in so long. And it now feels like Club Dallas, Club <laughs> SMU. When you come here, you got to be ready. It's bright. Is light, is lively. It, it brings your energy straight from when you walk in the door. So just, I'm really excited just where we're going and um, the evolution of our university and, and this new news of us going to a new conference. Uh, just want to have some new vibes. And, and I think, you know, the, all the offices and this just kind of put us on top of it. We were talking before about, all right, we're going to talk about this and that. And one <laughs> thing we didn't mention, maybe because, gosh, it's what, been a month and a half, yeah. SMU to the ACC. It's right yeah. there in the corner. Mm-hmm. What's that mean for you? What was your reaction? Because it was all for a year, Pac-12, you know, yeah, yeah. and now it's a reality. For I mean, basketball coach, it's got to be the dream. It's amazing. Um, you know, the hard work that Dr. Turner, Rick Hart, um, even David Miller has put into getting this and bringing it to fruition, it's amazing. Um, it's an exciting time to be a Mustang. It's a great time to be a Mustang. And now it's kind of opened the doors for these top-level recruits to really say, okay, we're different in Texas. SMU is different. You can get all SEC, you can get Big 12, but you can't get that ACC, which I feel is, is the best conference in the country, the Power Five. Um, and we have the marketable city of Dallas, and we have the academics. I feel it's like a triple threat. It's the best of three worlds. Um, so I'm really excited about the future of SMU. Yeah, how does that change for you guys on the recruiting trail? What's that response been like? Awesome. It's been amazing. So many congrats, so many text calls. We're getting visits coming through here. We're getting on the phone calls with top level recruits. So this was just like the icing on the cake. Like we were in, but now you have a real, a real chance, not just a slight slim chance. Now it's, it's a different opportunity. So I'm just really excited. You guys are going through preseason uh, practices now. Mm-hmm. How's that been getting, getting the girls together and ladies and really and good. That? I mean, it's the girls, it's a mixture of some vets, some some returners like the veterans and them freshmen and then some transfers um i really think you know the more practices you have the more chemistry you gain the more trust you gain from your players they get in shape faster the biggest thing is learning you know our plays learning defense i think defense is the hardest thing to learn on the basketball court um, because of terminology and different things you have to, to go flow with the team and rotations and things like that but one thing i love is that their energy they have that excitement and they have that focus every day they come in. And um, it's crazy. We only have, we play next Wednesday, our first exhibition game. It's here. It's the season is, is, is in full swing. What is the summer like for you? Uh, get out on the recruiting trail. Mm-hmm. Girls are working out. I mean, it's, it's got to be just that, that lead up is exciting, but busy. And mm-hmm. then you get into your routine, I would imagine. Yeah. So in the summer, um, the girls come for summer school. So it's not as strenuous right now or back in the summer like it is right now. Uh, we only go for four hours, you know, yeah. so eight hours total, four hours on the basketball court. So it's a little laid back. Uh, you only have one class. You don't have four or five classes. Um, and we're not on them as crazy. You know, we're not on them diligently, but we just want to get through that that regimen of time management of school, a little bit of school and a little bit of basketball. Um, we're recruiting in all of July, so we're always on the road. So we have to work our workouts around that. But um, it's, it's, it's really it's just fun. I always say. I don't feel like I'm going to work every day because it's something I love to do and I have passion for. So I'm just blessed to be around good people, great administration, um, my coaching staff, the players. Um, but this summer we're actually going to Croatia and Greece. So we're raising money to do a foreign tour. The men did one last summer. Um, and I think it's great timing because next year we're going to ACC. So we'll get some games under our belt. My wife loves Croatia. She's okay. going to want to be Tell on me. that trip covering it for you. <laughs> She'll be the personal assistant or something. Yeah. <laughs> We'll get it. We'll work on that. Yes, yes, exactly. But yeah, so we're going in August. So that's um, really exciting. We're just trying to raise some money for that in our excellence fund. Um, but going for 10 days, play two or three games, do a little bit of community ser- community service. And, you know, one thing I say with the, with the basketball and, and with the game of basketball, it opens up so many different worlds. And 
worlds that some of these girls don't have passports. Some of these girls never been out the country, out the, you know, this yeah. South area. So just to open their eyes to different cultures, embrace different foods, um, it's more than just basketball. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. Back-to-back -back NIT appearances, pick to finish fourth in the league. The expectations keep rising. Mm -hmm. um, what are your expectations going into this season? We want to leave a legacy um, in the AAC. Uh, so our, first, our last year in the AAC, and they've done a, such a great, phenomenal job, the conference, with accepting. Um, we've done a great job with our programs in the AAC, but just being a classy conference, and I love all the people over there, um, but we have high expectations as a team. They did their own team goals. And so it came from them on what they want to accomplish this year. And I feel like if it comes from the players, they're more invested um, and, and more focused and, and more visualizing what they want to do. And so um, our girls want to go out on top. We want to go to postseason and not just the WNIT. Um, so I, with that takes a lot of sacrifice, a lot of um, dedication, a lot of teamwork. And um, we're going to have to beat some really good teams this season. I think it's our hardest out of conference schedule that I've had since I've been here. But we have to challenge ourselves to be ready for the AAC. Yeah, Baylor, Colorado, mm -hmm. Louisiana Tech on there. What mm -hmm. went into putting together this competitive slate? And did it, you know, it's just that next step to yeah. getting them ready for the league play when you have that high expectation? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Baylor's preseason that just came out, AP poll, they're ranked 19th, Colorado is 20. Um, but we have to go and play Toledo and Harvard and California and San Diego um, over Thanksgiving. And they were in the champ, like basically the final four of the, of the WNIT. So we're playing some really tough competition. I wanted to go away a little bit to, to be tested on the road. I feel we had a younger team this year, so I want to have a lot of home games. So everybody come out and, and support us. <laughs> but, um, you know, I just wanted to get that mix of being challenged early. We had a really good home um, record last year. It was the best record, 13-2, and two, that they've ever had. And so, um, again, we just have to build off of everything, but take it one game at a time. There'll be some ups and downs, but it's kind of, you know, we got to stay even kill. Uh, having Ella Brow, Regan Bradley in your backcourt, that's got to help a lot. Yeah, I mean, you know, Regan came back for her fifth year this year, and she uh, brings us that calmness, um, that steadiness. She can score at all three levels. Ella Brow from Australia, hardworking. She's only a sophomore, was all-rookie team in AAC, and um, she brings us pace, shooting, basketball IQ. And so I'm really excited to her. Too. And we had our, you know, transfer, I'm not sure if you know, but Tierra Young came from Houston, who was the sixth player of the year. Um, she's going to come and be a matchup problem. Um, Maya Chandler is a transfer from Loyola, can shoot the ball, has a great motor. She's gritty. Um, I like her her mentality on the court. Um, and then obviously I know her front court, you know, with with being um, Amir Abdul-Rahim hasn't played a whole year. She tore ACL last year, transferred from Notre Dame. Um, Shantae Embry transferred from Texas Tech. She's coming back for her second campaign. Um, came back in better shape, so I'm really, really excited about her focus um, on herself, and then that will help the team. This roster, how, where are the areas that you feel better about? Where do you still mm -hmm. feel like, all right, we've got to come along a little bit more in those areas? I really think um, we're going to play a little smaller this year, but more like four guards, but we're going to be out in the, board, in, in the, in the open floor in the fast pace game. And so I'm really excited about our girls getting out, um, playing four guard basketball, really defending. Um, with our defense, I want to disrupt. I want it to be intense. I want tips, deflection, steals. Um, so the girls know when we're on defense, it's not that we're taking a break, it's that we're turning it up a little bit. Um, so really excited about this basketball, this brand of basketball that we're going to come, that, that fans are going to love to watch. You've been here a few years now. Could you have imagined not only your on-court success, now the next step you're expecting to happen, but you're going to go into a power conference like the ACC. For this school, what have you seen from kind of your point of view as it's kind of developed into this, this moment? I mean, it's just it's just amazing to see the growth um, and how quickly the growth came. You come here. I come here <laughs> two years ago. This is my third season, um, you know, mid-major conference. But we say power six because yeah. we felt like we still beat power five teams. Last year we beat yeah. Cal Berkeley and went out there. And, and so for me, it's just, the, the, again, the icing on the top. And, and it's it's where we're supposed, supposed to be. And I always tell our kids, our coaches, we belong here. Um, and so I'm just really excited about the growth of, of where it's even going to go after we are a year, two or three years in at the ACC. So again, it's a great time to be a Mustang and um, I'm excited about everything to come. You guys are getting ACC ready, uh, mm -hmm. the new offices and, mm -hmm. and just everything going on around campus mm -hmm. with athletics. What do you guys have to do from your side of it? And then you talked about raising money for 
the, the trip to Croatia and Greece, the offices obviously came from that as well. What do you guys need to be successful at the next level on that front too? Well, I really think obviously resources are going to be a lot more um, getting around all the way to those schools on the East yeah. Coast. Uh, so I would say definitely resources, but the portal is going to be important to us. Um, we're going to get the high level, you know, out of high school kids, but the portal, the immediate thing we need are going to be the portal. And so in April, obviously, we're going to be in the portal trying to get as many kids as we can um, that we need um, to be able to compete in the conference. And then now you're getting your rotation of your rolling classes, um, that 25, 26, um, 27 classes. So just getting those high level recruits to be successful, the resources, NIL is probably going to be important. The collective is going to be important. All that's going to be important in getting that totality of the best kids to come here to SMU. Uh, SMU known for NIL before it was legal. Yeah. Now, yeah. now it is legal. Yeah. What is what is that like from your perspective, and and how do you kind of manage that and push it in the right right direction if you can, or right. all the rules involved? Yeah, in I mean, that. there's a lot of rules we're really not involved in it, yeah. but I think the girls just it's, it's a great opportunity for especially for women right now. Um, the opportunity to to use their name, image, and likeness is really really um, important, and it helps them. It helps them mature, helps them grow as young ladies, um, getting them out there and being seen on social media, the following. Um, I mean, you saw Iowa just had a basketball game of 56,000 people on a football field. Um, what Angel Reese has done with, with her, her making over millions of dollars. And so it's a perfect time for our players, but I think they need to be educated more. I need to be educated more. Um, but maybe having, you know, I think the resources of having maybe a team of an NIL team in, at SMU to help these kids navigate what that means, what that looks like. They got to do contracts. They got to do taxes. They got to do all that. So I really think maybe a team of an NIL team would help, um, but really just uh, the resources. Uh, how valuable, we'll end on this, you've been at the highest of high uh, with women's college basketball and college basketball in general. How valuable is that once you guys do take that step to that conference? Well, I think they can understand once they see it, it's like, okay, this is what Coach T was talking about because, I, you know, I was at Baylor, I was at yeah. Michigan. And um, one thing I do is I've been around great coaches and I know what it takes to get there. But when you see and you're playing against basically a, a tournament caliber team, every game, game in and game out, you got to bring your A game. Um, it's one thing saying, it's one thing seeing it every day when you're playing a game. So it'll raise the bar and the level of each player's um, play. And um, I think it'll be all right. Well, I've no doubt you have things going in the right direction here in Club Dallas. So yes. <laughs> uh, it's exciting times. Appreciate you so much for, for spending some time with us on the podcast. Thank you. We'll do it again later this season. Thank you, Coach Wilson, for being here with us on no the problem. On the Pony Express podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed this interview. Check back again. We'll have Coach Wilson on throughout the season and uh, check out more of Club Dallas, maybe. Appreciate it. Pony up. Thanks for listening, guys. Have a good one. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to the On the Pony Express podcast with Billy Embody. Follow us on your socials on X at SMU on 3 and on Instagram at on 3 SMU. And keep it locked to onthepony.express.com for more coverage.